Michael here at drawingteachers.com. We're going to do a name on request. Uh, I've got a request from Bailey, and uh, here we're going to go. We've got uh, Bailey written out, and it's six letters, so right down the middle there, that's going to be the B A I and then L E Y. So uh, working backwards here, let's just get that, that spaced out. B A I. L, E, and then our Y here. Okay, now let's turn this into some cool looking graffiti style letters. And uh, what I'm going to do is to begin with, we're going to uh, work on the stick here for the B. And we're going to change this normal curve of the B to something that sort of uh, punches up like that. And then we'll let this bottom part be rounded there. And now for the A, thinking let's do something that gets larger at the top and shrinks at the bottom like that. And then the I, so you'll have that curve around the I, we'll just have it be a wavy line like that. And then the L will have the same wave to it. And then I'm going to take the bottom of that and sort of kick it up little wave like that. So we're kind of got some curves going, filling in the shapes here. And then let's see for the E, we're going to do something almost that's like the opposite of this B right here. And that will give us a little little symmetry going. We're going to do a loop there and then a loop there. So you see how that is sort of the opposite. That is the opposite of that. And for the Y, let's use this A right here and kind of do an opposite shape of that. And then let's see, we'll hook this down and curve it over like that. All right, there we go. That's some interesting looking letters. Again, looking for rhythm within the letters, repeating and inverting certain shapes. Okay, so how do we turn that into a, uh, a letter now? Well, we're just going to thicken up these strokes here, and then we're going to outline it. We'll just add some little bends onto these pieces and let's see, thicken up that part of that A. Let that curl around right there. We'll let the uh, stick on the A here do a little little curve, sort of like the, uh, the bottom of the L. And we're kind of repeating certain shapes. See the L is going to cross over the E. So we've got that I right in the middle there. And uh, I know this is getting kind of messy, so hopefully you can see through the mess here. Let that cross over. And I'm thinking of having this Y connect up, kick up and cross over here as if, it, as if it's reaching for the L. So you definitely can change things as, as you go. down a little bit, sort of be the opposite of, of that shape. And let's put a little piece hanging off the end of that. And a piece hanging off the end of that. And a little piece hanging off the end of that. Let that L kick up just a little bit. All right. Now it's time to go over this with um, magic marker. I've got a, a sharpie here with a fairly good point. It's kind of a fat sharpie. And uh, I need to put something underneath here because the sharpie bleeds through. So I've got myself an extra piece of paper underneath. Um, I can see something right now as I'm looking at it that 
with this Y kicking down here, this B is going to look kind of weak. That's something that sort of happens to me. I tend to make my first letter and then as I go along, my letters get, get larger and then my first letter looks kind of weak. So I'm going to make some adjustments to this first letter. You know, either that or I could make the, the Y smaller, but I think it would be cooler to let this B get bigger. And then at the same time, make the Y a little smaller. Alright, like that better? Alright, let's go ahead and ink this in. Come here and just start going around this shape. As I, as I move my hand over the drawing, I can cover, cover part of it so that my hand doesn't smear the pencil. There's the B. And here will be the A. We'll let that tuck a little bit behind there. for the eye. And now the Y. I'm making little adjustments as I go. I felt like that needed a little bump on the end. Just added it as I inked it in. And uh, you find this, you've been doing a lot of names lately. And I encourage you to try to do a lot of names. Um, family members, whatever. The more you do, the more you start to get ideas for how you can change the letters, distort them, make interesting shapes with them. Let that cross up under there. There we go. Now I'm going to take my kneaded eraser. It's a stretchy eraser here. And Start by rolling over the drawing. That'll get the most of it, most of the pencil up. Stretch that a little bit to work in the graphite. And 
clean up the rest of this. And so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that Bailey here is going to benefit from a uh, nice drop shadow. So we'll go ahead and do that next. Probably finish it off with an outline. All right, for the drop shadow, I'm going to let that drop off to the right lower side. So I can see if my hand is clean. Alright, so we're just going to step over a little bit to the right and the lower side. Got to the A, but I'm going to come back here, finish up the B, step down a little bit right there, same thing here, same thing here, inside here we'll get on the underside of this, see here we're going to step over and loop down, and here we'll see this side of it. There, the drop shadow will fall there, and here it'll start, and it'll just taper away right in there. All right, now for the A, we'll see the underside. We'll see a drop under that, and we'll see it right there, a little bit under there. See it come around this side, underneath there, come down this side, right to there. And on this side of the L, dropping under there, and dropping under there. All right, down under this part of the E, coming up underneath this part, and Copy that shape right there. Come out a little bit from there. Under there, let's see, it's going to be under this part of the L. And right here under the E. And let's see, this part of the Y, not going to see much dropping over here because of the angle. Yeah, maybe just a little thickness there, but we're really going to see it kick out right here. And come out around here. And kick out right here. You can see just a tad right there. From the E here, this part will get shadowed, and then from the Y, this part will get shadowed. And if you're finding this frustrating, it just takes practice. The more letters you do, the easier it gets. Now I'm going to look at it, see if I feel like I missed anything, which sometimes happens. Um, looking pretty good. Put a little bit in there. It just feels like it needs it. Okay, now let's go ahead and do an outline of this. So I'm going to start somewhere with a little bit of a, a gap here. And just trace carefully around this. Trying to keep a pretty even gap going.
it's okay if it gets a little thicker or thinner in places. You're not a machine, you're an artist. So that adds to the flair of the design. And right there on the Y, kind of make a call whether to cut in there or not. I've decided not to. So I want to leave this more of a background shape. And then you got to decide do you want to cut into these places or not. Um, I'm going to say not. I'm just going to leave it like it is. And uh, let's look at something we can do with coloring on this. I've got some different markers here different pinks and a, and a purple or lavender color and what I'm going to do is test these colors and see what they actually look like and I like those two shades that'll be nice and we've got one darker one here and it's good to have good to have some different color markers and uh, we've got this one here That'll be nice for some little accent or shading. Okay, so I'm going to take the lightest marker I have, which is this one, and I'm going to start coloring in right here in the middle of the letters. I'm going to leave the top not fully shaded, and then it get darker as I go down. And up top, what I'm doing is just drawing lines that are spaced apart rather than filling it all the way in. And as I get halfway down, filling it in more. I'm making my strokes at, a, at an angle and keeping the angle consistent. Alright, now let's go to more of a pink. I'm bring some of that pink in here. You know that color I used first? That wasn't actually my pink. I actually used more of a, a uh, this color here versus this color. Let me show you the difference. Started with this one right here, and you can see what that looked like. And then this one here, which is a little more pink, uh, you can probably see the difference. It's pretty subtle on the video. I'm going to go ahead and color the bottom of these letters in with this pink. And I'm going to bring some of that pink in up here into this middle part. Just blend those colors together a little bit. All right, and now let's go with the uh, I'll go with this, the darkest of the pinks. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a, uh, an edge. I'm not coloring all the way to the edges. I'm letting that lighter pink follow on the edges and just working my way into these letters and that leaves kind of a highlighted edge
All right, and that, that is totally running out on me, so I'm going to see if I have another one that's similar, and I do. It's sometimes good to have two packs of markers. This one is bolder. It's a lot uh, stronger, so I'm going to have to go back and, and hit the bottom of some of this again because I switched markers. Probably not the best to have to switch markers halfway through a project, but you just make it work. Just using that as a, as a shadow on the lower parts of these letters, but leaving a little white edge. See how I'm just putting that on the, on the lower part? And that got a little dark there, but that's okay. We'll just make that work by connecting it up. Put a little more up there. Okay. that connect up there. Alright, now for this background in here, I want this Bailey to pop off from the, from the background outline that we've done. So a, a color that complements or is a different value or you know is an, like a red and green are complements so that will pop that off but I'm not so sure how that'll look. Um, I think a really light purple would look nice. I think that's going to be too dark. I'm not sure I have the color that I need for that background. That is the lightest, the lightest purple I have right there. Hmm. What to do here? I know we're going to change tactics. I'm going to go. I'm going to get a colored pencil. I have an assortment of colored pencils that I've been collecting. Uh, we just went to a garage sale actually and uh, got a whole, whole basket of colored pencils that somebody was throwing away. This one looks nice. This is just a, let's say this is a Prismacolor, a Prismacolor colored pencil and it's a, a nice lavender. I think it'll look really nice in there. So we're, we're mixing marker and colored pencil here in our same drawing. And we'll just color that in. See how that's looking? Pretty cool. It's getting a little dark. I can take my kneaded eraser and I can lighten it up a little bit. Because it's pencil, the kneaded eraser does pick up some of it. I don't want it too dark because I've got the Got the drop shadow, and if we make the background too dark, we won't get any contrast. And yeah, we're almost done with this. I'm moving pretty quickly through this, so you can, you can go a little slower, take a little more care if you wish. I just don't want to turn this into a uh, into an hour-long video for you. So we'll get this filled in and finished up here. All right, there we have it.
We've got Bailey in uh, graffiti style letters with uh, some marker coloring and an out a drop shadow and outline and color that outline as a background uh, with a, a lavender pink color. Uh, Bailey, I hope you enjoy this one and we're going to move on and do some other names. Thanks so much for watching.